car, but if the engine isn't dealt with, it's still a broken car. Hey, what's up? Good I to see you again. She brought sources. Do you want to go ahead and start? Jesus was stolen from another religion. Which one? Prior religion. Which one? Which one? It was a story of an ancient god. Which you one? I actually have. You're incorrect. I've done more research than you can imagine. Can okay. Can hear my sources this time? Okay, what's your, what's your name? Hi, my name's Alina. Can I... Just That's because fine. people sometimes can get me, and I want somebody throwing it down. I don't no, think you would, uh, but I'll I'll let you speak for sure. I'm not gonna you know interrupt you every second. Right. So okay, say your name one more time, and then cheer for your friend. Hi, my name is Alina, and I'm here to prove that Christians actually commit more violent crimes. Okay, so uh, what's your source? I have several actually from the Bureau of Prisons. Twenty-eight point seven percent of prisoners are Protestant, and twenty-four percent are. Catholic. That means over 50% of people in federal prisons are religious. From the LA Times, we have a summary of several studies from the... Wait for the plane. Just so. Are you okay? You're shaking. I'm just... Anxious. Just so nervous. Okay, don't be anxious. Every, everything's okay. From the Pew Research Center, we have a summary of several studies in the LA Times that summarize that more religious states fare worse in societal issues, including they have more violent crime, higher homicide rates, Lower measures of societal health and the rates of non-theistic states fare much better than those that are highly religious. I'm sorry. The rate of child abuse in more religious states is significantly higher than those in less theistic states, which correlates directly to the child raising practices that the Catholics love to give out to parents that literally, quote, say, break the will of your child. That is abuse. Hey, thanks. Thanks, Richard. What you say? Just for a second. He, I don't know what he wants to say, but he, what's your name? Don't worry about that. Okay. Uh, I failed to see any correlation. I think believing in God is cool sometimes. All right. Have a good day. Okay. So I would like to answer now. Remind me your name one more time. Okay. Alina. Okay. So here's the issue. I think that religion doesn't deal with the greatest issue in a person's heart. So I'm not, I'm not out here pro-religion. So for example, do you know how many people in America claim to be Christians? Most of them. Do you know what percentage of Americans actually believe and try to practice what the Bible says? Most of them, including probably you. No, it's actually only 4%. And I can, I, if you want to, you know, we can talk about the sources after that, but it's a legitimate source. Most people that go to church are doing that to just try to appease their guilt. They just kind of want to have God in the, in the picture, you know, so they can maybe feel better. But what real Christianity preaches, um, did you grow up any kind of faith? I grew up in a Baptist church. Okay, do you know what Jesus said is necessary to be his disciple? A love of God, I'm pretty sure. I'm not sure. Well, he said, if anyone wants to be my disciple, they must, must take up their cross and follow me. Whoever wants to save their life will lose it. Whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. So what do you think it means to pick up your cross? I think it means to take responsibility for the problems that you're causing and actively work to make things better, which I don't think Christianity promotes. Well, let me explain. Picking up your cross is actually something deeper than that. It is taking responsibility, but it's denying yourself. So why do people commit crimes? It's because they won't deny themselves. They want what they want. If they want to be angry, they get angry. If they want to steal, they steal. So it's not a correlation that people that... Anybody can call themselves a Christian. I mean, people can... Just like anybody could steal your identity and do horrible things and then... You know, someone could judge you for it, but I'm saying let's look to Jesus Christ and what he, he taught and preached. Can I tell you what I think the correlation okay. is between religion and crime? The correlation is if you think that, if you say at the end of the day after murdering someone that, oh, I asked God for forgiveness, therefore I'm not going to hell for murdering someone, you think you can do whatever you want, which is what most Christians do. They think they can do whatever they want because at the end of the day, they think they have some almighty imaginary being's forgiveness and will not be punished for it. They Can think I, they are better than you. I don't think I'm better than you, and I'm, anyone that's really a Christian doesn't think they're better than you. The Bible says that we're sinners saved by grace, so we don't deserve it. But have you been hurt by people that claim to be Christians? Yes. Can I actually ask another question? Uh, just one second. So, have you been hurt by people that claim to be Christians? Yes. So, if those people that claim to be Christians hurt you... Um, and they weren't actually following Jesus Christ. Is that a reflection of them or a reflection of Jesus Christ? Actually, a lot of them use the word of Jesus to justify hurting people. There is a line in the Bible that has been mistranslated by the Catholic Church and is held up as 
the line that makes homosexuality a sin. And they use that Bible quote. They use the Bible to commit crimes against gay people. That is using the Bible. That is following Jesus' word because it was Jesus' word that said supposedly that homosexuality is a sin. Therefore, that denies what you're saying because according to you, they're following the Bible. So they're being good Christians, but they are hurting other people because they disagree with them. Okay, so here's the issue. You can disagree with somebody. For example, the, the thing that you're thinking about the mistranslation is in Leviticus. But I'm dealing with Jesus Christ and the gospel, him dying on the cross for sin and calling people to repentance. And in the New Testament, Jesus said that marriage was one man, one woman. So Jesus defined it as that. He also And in the, the epistles, which if you grew up in a Baptist home, you know, like the book of Romans, and you know the different things, and you know, inspired by God, they say, that if you are a practicer of fornication, idolatry, witchcraft, lying, stealing, cheating, homosexuality. So it doesn't just call out homosexuals, it calls out all sin. So God says that we're all, all equally in need of his forgiveness. Whether you're gay, whether you're straight, whether whatever your background is, each person needs God's forgiveness. Because have you ever sinned? Yeah, all of us have. So how is your sin forgiven apart from Jesus Christ? I'm not really sure what you mean by that. How do you go from being guilty to innocent if Jesus Christ didn't die for your sins? That deals with self-acceptance. You have to accept your actions and forgive yourself for them. That's more important than some imaginary figure's acceptance of your sins. But that's like somebody going to a judge and saying, Judge, I don't believe you're there. I'm going to accept myself. A judge is a real person. A judge is a person well, in a court of law. God is the judge of the universe. And you have a spirit and you have a soul and a consciousness. I mean, I don't know your life story. But I can tell you that Jesus Christ is the only one that can deal with the hurt in your life. And he loves you and he died for you. And there's no hope in paganism. There's no hope in worshiping self or worshiping anything out there. Because at the end of the day, each person, they come to the end of themselves and there's nothing there to stand on. Jesus said that we can either build our life on him or build our life on shaky ground. And when we build our life on shaky ground or on ourself, when the storms of life come, everybody's house will get blown over if we're not built on him. So... You know, have you reject? Do you reject Jesus today? I do. Yeah, I reject. No, I would like to clarify that. Actually, I reject the notion of organized religion because, in my opinion, that's what's causing the downfall of this country. Your religion breeds anti-intellectualism and a complete disregard to thinking for yourself, and that's what I think is wrong here. I do you know? Do you know who Sir Isaac Newton was? Yeah, everyone does. Laws of physics. He was a Christian. Sir Robert Boyle, Christian. A lot of scientists and people that have come up with inventions are Christian. So you're making, I'm not, against, I'm not for organized religion. I'm for a relationship with Jesus Christ. So I don't go to a priest. I don't go to a pope. Even though I'm a pastor, I'm not the intermediary between people and God. The thing that God intended to do is to reconcile us to himself. So I know you have a lot of anger against organized religion. But my challenge, my challenge to you today would be to reject you go ahead reject organized religion but don't reject jesus christ and jesus christ said things that are challenging because love will cause you to have to have boundaries in your life if you love somebody you will have boundaries and god does call us out of sin to turn from sin and to turn to him regardless of how how valuable that sin is to us everybody has a valuable sin in their life and they must turn away from their sin and turn to god and god will accept them but they have to repent and believe in him i have one more question for you before i have to go a lot of times people say that gay people are shoving their beliefs down people's throats by just existing. And I would like to ask, how is religion not doing the same? I see you out here every single day on my way to class screaming at people about how they need to believe in Jesus and your God. How is that not shoving your beliefs down somebody's throat? Do you believe that you are not shoving your beliefs down everyone on this campus who walks by you every single day's throat? Right, I believe I'm disgusting like I am now because I'm not screaming at people and I'm not condemning people. I'm not saying, hey, you're going to hell. I'm sharing information. I'm sharing knowledge and, you know, allowing people to dialogue with me, and I appreciate the dialogue. So, yeah, for example, people, if they would listen, people make assumptions without listening. So that, you know, as you, I can say, probably you had one assumption, like this guy would never let me speak, probably never care about me, and even if you're LGBT, he's going to make me feel like trash. But no, because we're dialoguing, you get to see that that's not who I am. So people, you're guilty of making judgments against people, too. So that, that's where we need God's help. God wants us loving one another, but we have to be connected with him to love one another. You got a question? I was actually for you. I came in at a really weird time. Do you want to jump in on the mic? Or... Uh, 
I guess. Come on, jump and do it, do it. Okay, what's your name? Juliana. Everybody clap for Juliana if you're still here. Please. Okay, never mind. I'm not trying to embarrass you. <laughs> so I came in at a really bad time when you were speaking, but so you said something like um, that uh, religion, like organized religion prevents you from thinking on your own. And I think that while I'm not religious and I do have issues with organized religion, I do think that people choose to follow things in their own way and people can find their own meaning through it and they can actually use it to uh, to guide their own thinking. So I, it depends on your relationship with religion, but I agree and disagree with both of you and I just thought that that was important to share. Hey, I appreciate you dialoguing. Do you have a question? Thank you for your time. Okay. Yeah, just out here sharing about Jesus and it's an open mic if people have questions. Anybody on the hill wanna jump on the mic? Anybody? Anybody wanna jump on the mic? Anybody? Anybody? Okay. Well man, today's a great day to hear about Jesus. To think about God's love for each person.